Well, I got tired of sitting in the truck stop. I uh, could not find a load, so I, I was too lazy to drop the trailer. So I just drove my 20 ton uh, recreational vehicle, truck and trailer, to the shopping plaza. There's a mall inside, you know, lots of seating. There's a Walmart next door. But there's signs you cannot drive in there. And that's the Walmart over there. So I just stopped here on the side of the road. Spent about three hours inside. Went to McDonald's, did some shopping at the... Oh, this is not a good place. It's shaking so bad. Uh, yeah, went, spent some time at Mac uh, Walmart, McDonald's, you know, bought some vitamins. Uh, I ran out of B1. B1 is very important, the vitamin I found that if you drink, you must take B1. I'm not talking about excessive drinking, but any kind of alcohol, turns out it kills B1 uh, vitamin. And B1 is very important for your eyesight. Uh, that's just a tip for people that uh, like tequila, okay? Don't, don't say that I did not warn you. Anyway, I wanted to talk today about uh, winter challenges for drivers. Well, one challenge is uh, how to keep the truck warm. And of course it helps when you have a bunk heater. And especially useful is the type that also warms up the engine. The oil in the engine, those are the best. Because otherwise uh, uh, you can shut off the, the, the truck and be very comfortable inside the sleeper behind these curtains. Uh, and then you wake up in the morning, like what happened to me a couple of years ago in Northern Ontario, right? And it's minus 40 Celsius or Fahrenheit, the same thing, and the truck just died because the oil froze, you know? So if you buy a bunk heater, make sure it's uh, the one that also warms up the oil. And I, ha I do have a bunk heater, but these damn things, you know, they, they're so fragile. Uh, they don't like the contemporary uh, diesel fuel that has lots of stuff in it, not just diesel, right? Uh, and, and they just clog up and you have to rebuild them probably every year so uh, I wanted to get one and mine just died uh, I think uh, last winter even uh, last winter I didn't use it I was just idling and and so then you have to idle you know if you don't have that let's say today it's uh, 5 minus 13 Celsius or 9 Fahrenheit but they promise of minus 20 which I think is below zero Fahrenheit at night, you know. But that's the challenge, because uh, a lot of truck stops don't have any seating, you know. It's funny, like, they don't have any area where you can sit, you know. Like, in this, at this truck stop, uh, they have two here. They have an ESO on the outskirts of uh, Swift Current Saskatchewan, and then there's a uh, Husky. Husky is bigger and has a more more paved parking uh, and a slightly better restaurant but again like you can spend time either buying stuff in the convenience store or you can wash your clothes or you can go to the washroom or you can be inside the restaurant right they, they don't have like a daily kind of area you know like uh, in the states a lot of let's say pilot truck stops they have a whole bunch of uh, tables and seats where you can go you know let's say if you they have a subway uh, you know, restaurant and you get something and then you go there to sit and that's where you can, when it's cold, that's what I would do, you know, when I play with my computer, I go inside, but these truck stops, there's nowhere to sit and you cannot sit in the truck during the daytime because you'll be idling like 24-7, right, so you have to idle at night anyway, but, so either you have to find some, somewhere to, to sit, to spend your time, or you're crazy, you want to go for a run or a, or a skiing tour, of the uh, area, or you go to a hotel, you know, that's the challenge in winter. Because, of course, in the summer there's another challenge, especially somewhere down south, uh, deep south, it can be like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so you cannot be in the truck uh, unless you want to idle again, or unless you have that, you know, some system that provides uh, cool air. So, that, those are a couple of things that we have to deal with. So. How to stay warm, where to spend time in winter when you're not driving, and how to keep your truck uh, warm. And uh, like I was lucky that last time I fueled, I got like 50 gallons, I think, uh, in Montana. 
and I put this uh, anti-gel thing in. See, I put half a bottle because I did not know if that diesel in Montana is uh, designed to handle cold. Like most uh, diesel stations here, of course, they add something, otherwise the diesel would freeze it, the gel at the pump, right? So when you fuel here, you kind of save. But it's like five bucks per gallon, you know? Like, I think over there in Montana, it was uh, Shelby, Montana, the place where I slept last time. It was uh, 379, the same place where I won uh, 100 bucks in uh, at the casino. So you know, I couldn't pass the bus the the opportunity to get some cheap diesel. But here in this tundra, you know, <laughs> see, I'm sitting. This is kind of like almost downtown, right? I'm sitting next to a shopping mall. To my right is a field. Check out that huge pile of snow. At least they were working on it, you know, to keep the roads uh, safe. But I just drove, uh, instead of taking the Trans Canada from Husky, I took a service road and my wheels were spinning going up, you know, like even with these uh, bridge stones, uh, it's still slippery. Oh, by the way, some guys wanted to see the tires. Let me show you. So these are my uh, now favorite tires, Bridgestone. This is, uh, what is it called, the Bridgestone? It's 11R225, but uh, the model is M726EL, extra long mileage. So remember guys this, M726EL, if you drive in the northern parts of the country where it often snows, and you have to drive through the ice, check this out. Like this is Also I find that it's uh, very useful to have these big uh, spreads between the treads for stones, you know, like even though some of them gets, get stuck in there, but it's much better than my previous Yokohamas, you know, stones or rocks don't stay in there for too long, you know, they're thrown out. And this is great on snow, great on ice, so highly recommended. M726EL. In case someone from uh, the deep south US is watching this, just please, no, no small children and no pregnant women. I'm gonna show you something that you probably <laughs> don't see too often in your part of the country. White gold, you know? Jesus. Look how much of it is here, it's everywhere. Well, at least it stopped snowing, but now the uh, cold front is coming. And that's why I wanna get out of here. And I was just talking to a guy uh, about a load uh, going to US, some kind of uh, machinery, but they're not sure when it's gonna be ready. But at least it, at least it pays okay. And, uh, there was another load, I just, my, my eyes hurt, you know, I spent like a half a day at the computer. Um, but I wouldn't have it any other way, like some people tell me like, why are you crazy? You don't have a dispatcher, you know, no one is helping you, like, I don't need any help, okay? Especially the kind of kelp I was getting at, uh, let's say, Makina Transport and the Challenger Motor Freight, forget it. I'd rather take care of my own truck. But anyway, so there was a load for a double drop trailer. Hold on, let me, let me uh, increase, increase my, my RPM. What do we have? 850 is my target RPM for idling. See, that's my uh, gear master. The best part about uh, this gadget is that it gives me a much more accurate uh, digital tachometer. If you see here it says 860-870, check out here. The analog one just says, I don't know, 810, 820, so it's totally wrong. And the, but the speed here, it's supposed to show speed, the speed is not too accurate. But anyway, so there was another load, uh, it seems like there was an auction in Edmonton, Alberta. 
just, you know, this being my lucky day, all the loads are for double drop trailers, right? Like everybody's saying, uh, oh no, they, if you get a low boy trailer, you'll, you know, you'll be doing uh, 5,000 mile uh, deadheads. Well, there's a load here, 300 miles away, pays, uh, I forgot, either 10,000 or 15,000 bucks, but it's heavy. And it's like 11 feet, two inches tall, 11 feet wide and weighs 73,000 pounds and it's a dozer. So, <laughs> I sent him an email and said, hey, can they uh, cut off a piece of stack or something? I mean, can it be made legal, you know? like. <laughs> no, I'm just curious, you know? Uh, actually, yeah, one, uh, one, lo one, one posting said it was a dozer, but the other one did not specify what it was because, of course, I cannot pick up a dozer because it's uh, too much weight on the outsides of the trailer where I don't have any beams, all right? That's why you need a double drop trailer because they have four beams where I only have two in the middle. So if I load a dozer like that, like the, the, the outside of my trailer will just buckle because it's only supported by, uh, you know, some thin metal uh, frame members, so they're not designed to handle any serious weight on the outside. That's why we use 4x4s and shit like that. But anyways, I call them and I say, hey, you know, <laughs> I like the price. Can we cut off a piece of stack or something? And she says, oh, no, I don't have a picture, but the customer is going to send me a picture. I'm not quite sure what it looks like. So again, a broker, well, Lance the region, has no idea what the load looks like. But she does, has, uh, she does have dimensions, and while we were talking, I went online to uh, Rigi Brothers' uh, you know, auction website where they have specs for a lot of types of uh, machinery. And I saw that uh, truck, it was like a, I mean tractor, like D8 something, like a huge Caterpillar dozer. And it has no stacks, and uh, the height, it's so big that the height from the ground to the top of the cab is already really like 11 2 11 4 so of course I cannot do that so it's either this load partial load uh, no not partial machinery load that I not they're not sure when it's gonna ship but at least it pays like 250 per mile but the guy is not sure yet I have it or there's a partial some kind of stupid agricultural attachment 32 feet long and they treat it as a partial but it goes to Oklahoma uh, like 1300 miles pays dollar 34 which is okay for a partial but they're taking 32 feet of my space and they don't want to pay me the full uh, truckload price and there's not a single partial anywhere in this part of the country so I call them I said what am I supposed to do you want me to haul load for dollar 35 gross to Landstar so what I'm getting like 20 cents per mile after fuel well, what do you do? That's another challenge, right? Once you end up in a in a in a place like this, you know, it's tough to get out unless you want to pull something for uh, for uh, a real cheap, you know, a real cheap money, real low rates. So, so that was my rent for today. I'm gonna call it episode one. Life as a trucker, you know, maybe uh, America through the windshield of a truck. I haven't decided yet, but I want to do like, uh, you know, like use one name all the time that so that people know what the heck I'm talking about, right? And then just have episodes like they do on uh, like ice trucks or something, right? And then all I have to do is when someone asks me, hey, can you talk about this? I'll just say, hey, go check out episode 7 or episode 5003. So you guys tell me, right? Okay, so I have these two names for this uh, kind of channel, right? So one is America through the windshield of a truck. And the other one is uh, Life as a Trucker. And you guys uh, tell me which one you like best, and we're gonna use that one and just then uh, number each movie as an episode. All right, so stay safe and be warm. Happy holidays. This is the final approach to the truck stop. If you see the flag, Canadian flag on the left, that's where I'm heading. I just uh, left the shopping mall and everything is extremely slippery. You gotta be real careful. I'm using uh, my uh, two and a half wheel drive. Which actually, not a, like a, I don't have full locks, but I do have something like power divider. It does help a bit. And 
them. Like I mentioned before, I'm really, I'm really liking my Bridgestone tires. Now, what do you do when you see a stop sign and it's slippery? Well, you gotta use your judgment.